Um, I have been with the uh, market research space for about 25 years in agencies like Nielsen and Hamza Research. And uh, I then moved to the social sector, uh, to Parikrama Humanity Foundation, uh, about seven, eight years ago. And uh, what I am going to speak to you about today basically combines uh, perspectives that I've gained from the market research agency uh, in terms of you know, uh, being comfortable with data and uh, data collection techniques and data analysis. And then what I've seen over the last seven years, in uh, seven to eight years actually, in, uh, in, in, in the social sector at Parikrama. So I am, uh, I just believe that there, you know, this whole uh, new phrase of data for good, uh, it's exciting and it has uh, uh, unbelievable potential. And I am excited to uh, bring my thoughts to you on this topic today. Yeah. So, uh, like I said, I work with Parikrama Foundation. And to give you a very brief uh, overview of what Parikrama does, we run four free schools from, for about 1,500 children from the slums of Bangalore. Uh, and what is unique about Parikrama is that we have a 360 degree model where we combine high quality academics. So children come at you know, age five and they are with us from um, UKG all the way up to class 12. And for those 13 years, uh, do, the parents don't need to pay anything and the entire uh, education is entirely free. We also give nutrition uh, by way of breakfast, lunch, and an evening snack. We take care of all their health needs. And in addition, we do a lot of work with the parents in terms of skilling them, building their awareness, etc. So the strength of the model has been val validated over the last 20 years, and our alumni really um, are the best validation of the model today. They are engineers, doctors, lawyers, uh, designers, etc. Right? So uh, a lot of what I'm going to say today, this is really, I am not here to plug the organization that I work for. I am really here to, like I said, talk about the social sector at large and uh, you know how um, data for good, the whole concept can be used um, at a much larger level for the greater good of the country, right? So uh, that said, let's jump in. Okay. So you know, I don't mean to be facetious here. But when you say data for good, my question from a social organizational perspective is what data? So, you know, in India, we are used to having a paucity of data across verticals, right? Uh, there's not a great deal of data available in any sector. And we are all used to data using, you know, uh, uh, searching for data, data that's like really old whether it's in the public uh, domain, whatever, and a lot of it is not very accurate. So in the social sector, that problem is magnified many times, right? Uh, most NGOs in this country, there are 3 million plus NGOs in India. Most of them are small. They work on the ground. So for various reasons, they don't have the resources being the primary reason. Uh, and then, of course, many of them work in an environment which is not always congenial to data gathering, right? So that said, most NGOs don't even collect data, right? If they do collect data at all, it tends to be uh, data that's collected with not a great deal of rigor. It tends to be uh, purely, you know, uh, anecdotal case studies uh, created just to um, satisfy a donor's need for impact. Yeah. So that's that's the reality. Certainly, we do have a few big NGOs in this country, like Akshay Patra, uh, a friend of mine has been working at a phenomenal NGO called Antara, which works in Maharashtra, Madhya Pradesh, where they have they have data scientists who are using high tech, right, to help them implement their work better. But believe me, those are very very unusual. The the majority of nonprofits in this country either don't have data or if they are if they do have data, the data is poorly collected. And uh, even if it's uh, uh, collected, uh, it's, it's just there. They don't know what to do with it. Right? 
So that is really the situation on the ground. And uh, today, um, like I said, I don't speak to you uh, not for Parikrama, not from Parikrama, but I'm speaking to you on behalf of all those small and medium-sized NGOs out there. Uh, because I think this audience of women and a few men in tech is, um, is a great place uh, to talk about this because there are so many synergies possible between the corporate sector and uh, the social tech sector in terms of creating, designing, and bringing all that data together for the larger group. Yeah. So that's really uh, what I'm going to speak to you today about. So, I mean, these thoughts have been going on in my head for a long time, and finally I arrived at it's something like a Maslow's hierarchy of needs, right? So, um, let's call it an NGO sector hierarchy of needs with regard to data. So like I said, for data for good to work at all, the presence of data, data collection systems, needs to be considered a hygiene factor, right? You can't even go further if you don't have data. So there is there is a very critical need to put these data systems, data collection systems in place really quickly. Um, along the way, I mean, uh, once we have the data as a hygiene factor, once we have some data available, and I talk to you uh, as we along and talk to you about my thoughts on how to get that data together, then only and only then once there is data of some quality, some rigor available, then we can move to the next step where we are talking about data partnerships where corporates and the social sector can work together productively to use this data you know, uh, in a way that is helpful for the NGOs and then we can move further up where you know, we talk about data for partnerships where we move uh, social sector data, whatever there is of it, out of the silos that it exists in today and bring them in so that they can partner with each other and learn from each other. And finally, uh, I envisage, maybe I'm being idealistic, naive, whatever it is, I envisage at the highest level of this pyramid a three-way symbiotic relationship between the social sector, the NGOs, the corporates, that's you, and the government, right? For anything to scale in this country, you have to work with the government, that's the way. Yeah. So that's the way um, I see, uh, you know, the three stakeholders working together for the greater good. Uh, there is so much social work being done today, a lot of it is of phenomenal quality. As corporates, I mean, this morning I've been listening to a few sessions. There's obviously so many analytical tools out there, right? Um, and yeah, and we need the government to pitch in as well. So, so let's get started with the bottommost level, of course, which is the data. I think. Shape. 
Then, like I said, uh, we do a lot of work with the families. And that data is of so much value because we want to know, because unless, it has always been our belief that unless the families are great, you know, whatever you do with the children is not going to take, right? So we do some, uh, a lot. We have a very good community outreach team and they are working, they are doing skilling, they are doing awareness building. And they said, yes, yes, Anuradha, we have data. So I go and it's all in hard copy files, you know, and I'm like, this doesn't help me, we need to digitize this. But then the problem is that with due respect to the CSR and the CSR programs, nobody wants to fund something as boring and prosaic as data entry. That's, yeah, that's, 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 the, that's a fact. Nobody will fund it. So over the last four or five years, I have scraped together a little bit of money here and there, and we, now today a lot of our data is digitized. But that's a parikrama, yeah, where I come from with a data background. That's not the case with most NGOs, right? So it's very important, I think, and that's where really corporates, you guys can, you guys can really come in, is if you can teach NGOs about the A, the importance of data, B, how do you design it? Design it not just with a view of showing impact, right? But with a view of designing it so that it actually gives feedback to the NGO in terms of how I can improve my intervention, what is working, what is not working, right? And this, and the reason I say that you need to teach the NGOs, it cannot be done from the outside because these systems have to be uh, innate to the, to the NGO, right? It cannot be imposed. So that's where I think corporates can come in, volunteers can talk about data and help NGOs design data systems which are, uh, you know, they are designed to uh, give them both impact metrics, obviously impact is important, but it is also designed to help them improve their program. Um, and then um, tell them, you know, how it can be used, but at least get them started on rigorous data collection. And that's where I think the corporates can really, really help. Yeah? Um, now, I mean, a lot of uh, thanks again to the CSR systems. We do have companies coming and saying, hey, you know, we're going to do an impact study for you. But with the impact study, what happens is A, it's designed to measure only impact, which means it's not necessarily going to give you a lot of feedback on your intervention. B, it is, like I said, it is an externally imposed thing. The data is not, doesn't belong to the NGO. They don't even get to see it. it just, it just acts like a pass grade, and if uh, if the NGO passes, they you know they heave a sigh of relief and they say, "Acha, I passed the exam today till next year, as long as you continue my funding." So this external impact uh, data measurement really doesn't do much for the NGOs themselves, right? But I am talking about something else. I'm talking about corporates helping NGOs set up data systems internally. Yeah. So let's assume that we have at least 50 to 60 percent of our NGOs set up with some sort of a data system. Then where do we move to next? This is where again uh, the corporates can be of real help, right? Because while, like I said, data collection uh, needs to be done obvious, for obvious reasons by the NGO themselves, a lot of the time, even when it's collected, they don't know what to do with it. And for obvious reasons, A, they don't have the resource, B, it's a question of people, right? So in most uh, non-profits, what happens is, uh, depending on the sector that they are in, so a uh, health NGO would probably have 90% of its people who are doctors or nurses or what. At Parikrama, because we are in the education space, most of the people, we 95% of our employees are teachers, for obvious reasons, right? So, we are usually faced with a lack of resources, uh, money to hire people like the data manager, right? And, and then of course you have the additional thing like, oh my God, you can't be spending, uh, you can't be uh, spend, uh, you know, uh, more than 10% overhead is not allowed. What the hell? I mean, 
these, these are programmatic aspects that are actually re required. So it's, it's important for corporates also to understand that, right? Somebody to collect data, a specialist who helps the NGO collect data, manage the data, keeps it clean, is not just an overhead expense. It is an essential if we are to move towards data for good, right? So, uh, yeah, so that's where I think corporates can really be of help because you can use the considerable analytical power that you have, you know, the techniques and um, the, um, you know, all the, just the crazy arsenal that you guys seem to have to um, help NGOs get more of the data that they can, right? And this is where volunteering can be really useful. Uh, but when I say volunteering, I'm going to add a massive word of caution here. Because again in my experience, uh, and I, I mean no disrespect, but you know, I have a lot of NGOs coming to us and saying, oh, Anuradha, you have, I heard Parikrama, you have a lot of data, can we help you with analysis? I said, yeah, sure, of course. Because um, whatever data analysis we do, is then reasonably simplistic, and I would love to be used, to be able to use some of the AI techniques, etc., that you know, everybody's talking about, to extract more of the data. But then, you have to realize that such kind of volunteering has to be a long-term commitment. So it can't be, I mean it takes a week just to understand what Parikrama does. We have four schools, we have a teacher training program, we work with parents, I mean, and, and that's not just Parikrama, right? It's, it's most NGOs, if you're going to try and understand everything that they do, at least a minimum of a week. So at the end of the week you can't say global giving week is over, I'm going. Uh, but that's the reality. Right? So, um, so yeah, okay, we'll wait until next global giving. I mean, look, I, and I really don't mean to be disrespectful, disrespectful, but that's the truth. So, you must understand that if you want to come and help NGOs um, use data, you know, for something else, um, then you have to be committed for at least a year because you need to a understand the processes. Uh, B, understand the kind of data that they have, what are the gaps, can they be, can the gaps be filled in some way and then start analyzing and then of course analysis is not again like a one day process or a two day process, it's, it's a continuous exercise, right? So uh, data for partnerships, that's what I mean, I'm talking about some degree of commitment from corporates where they actually understand the NGO, sit down with the data, which hopefully they helped design and collect in the first place, then sit with it, analyze it. And then you can give NGOs feedback in terms of, you know, uh, not just impact, but what you should, maybe what you should be doing, what is working, what is not working. Yeah. Yeah. So then if we move on, So then let's come to level three, which is data for connections. And this is really where, to my mind, it can get really exciting, yeah? Data for connections is about bringing non-profits with data together. So today, non-profits work in strict silos. I mean, if you think corporates are competitive, you have no idea. No non-corporate, no non-profit will share their data. I mean, A, if they have this data, but even if they do, they don't want to share it. Not even aware of what else is happening, but then in every major sector, whether it's education, whether it's health, you have hundreds of NGOs working. A lot of uh, the kind of work they are doing is very similar. So why, why is there no mechanism that allows us to share our learnings? Right? I mean, there have there have been some uh, sporadic attempts to do this, uh, but nothing that's really been to scale and nothing that's been sustained, yeah? So, um, my suggestion really is that corporates get together. I mean, if you're serious about this, corporates get together and form a body, you know, much like an ASCOM or some a body which will be able to create a platform where anonymized data from all the NGOs can actually be fed onto the platform and then you use uh, really high level techniques to try and understand, get learnings and so that if, see, I mean take our example, right, at Parikrama, we don't have, uh, uh, we take 
or children in terms of economic fees, okay? So we don't have any, like we don't give them a test and say you have to do so well, etc. It's ridiculous for children coming to this club. But then, we therefore, because it's only economic fees, therefore we also get children who have learning disabilities, you know, emotionally traumatized from abusive background, we get everything. So we need to practice what is called differentiation in the classroom because in a class of 30, you know, there'll be two, three who are really bright who can go and study in any school out there. And then you have the mid-15, 20 who are okay. But then you have five or six in every class who are really have problems. They cannot learn. They find it very difficult. So they need to be treated differently, which is why we use a technique called differentiation in the classroom. And it's, it's, it's a fairly common term in education. But we are not great at it. Because our teachers are trained to be sensitive, etc. But we are not specially trained to deal with children who have serious issues, right? But there are NGOs out there who are doing this kind of work. So uh, my academic head would love to learn and see what other techniques we can use, what can we do, right? We, it would be so useful. So what I'm saying is that we need an extra, why, and again, we need somebody who can bring all this data together, anonymize it, put it on a platform, and start analyzing it, and, 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 and get insight. And, and if I, as an NGO, have a question, I should be able to approach that. And, and like I said, why is it it has to be an external body? It's never going to be from, from within the social sector. Very few uh, social sector organizations have the heft to do it, uh, bar like an Akshay Patra, or you know, a few of them. And, and, why would they? Right? So it's very important to get an external body and that can only come either from the government or the corporate sector. Yeah? And obviously, you know, the data is going to be in different formats, different metrics, but those are small problems when you consider the kind of analytic uh, uh, tools that you have out there. Yeah? And finally, if we move to the highest of this uh, hierarchy, can we use data as a force for greater good, right? You, if we have data on a common platform, then the next obvious step is to use it for guiding policy, right? And that's where the government has to come, right? And I think it's important for the government also to understand the kind of impact that the hundreds and thousands of NGOs working out there have, have been have been actually creating, right? This today, I don't know if you're aware, there's a great deal of distrust of the NGO sector. Yeah. So for a first step, just being able to showcase the kind of impact that NGOs have had would be a great first step to kind of vitiate the distrust that's out there, right? But more important in my mind is if we can convince the government to start collecting some focused, relevant data and equally importantly sharing it with the social sector, hey, there is there is no holding India back. And I mean, and I mean that really, uh, you know, I really, really mean that. And I'll give you a short, small example. I was talking, there's my friend Teju out there who runs this wonderful NG, uh, organization called NSmiles. And she's been moaning to me about she, you know, so her organization, they work with a lot of school children and they do vocational training, counseling, etc. Now, the reality is that in most government schools, so her methods have been validated on hundreds of thousands of public government school children. So, she says, she goes into government schools and for 7th to 10th, she's doing vocational training or she's doing career counseling, etc. That's twice a week. Then two more days in a week, dream a dream will come and they will do some life skill classes. Then another NGO, three will come and they will do something else. Now, is there anybody monitoring the separate or collective impact of all these interventions? Right? That's one. Second, where is, I mean, there is no last mile, right? So if today N smiles and they do, if they are based on their career counseling findings, advise a child to go into, I don't know, carpentry. You have no idea whether the child actually went into carpentry. You don't know what the child has ended up as. Whether what you suggested was useful, not useful, right? So it's, 
that's that kind of data can only be collected by the government, right? And even if it's collected, they are very wary of sharing any data with us. So again, this this only a corporate body would have the heft to convince the government that not only do you have to collect this kind of data, you have to share it. And if we are able to design this kind of a three-way synergy, right? There is no holding us back. And believe me, if we are able to do that, it would make India unique in the world. Yeah? So, yeah.